Hi, my name is Mangna Nudal. I'm a captain instructor on ATAR aircraft. This video is the first in a series of videos about the cockpit. In order to reach the cockpit, we enter the aircraft from the rear. Turn left at the galley and walk through the cabin. This is an ATR-72-600 with enlarged overhead bins and slim seats. The magazine pockets are at the top of the seat back, which allows for more legroom. Then we pass the forward cargo compartment and enter the cockpit. The cockpit door is bulletproof and made of two panels that open backwards. They are locked with two electromagnets controlled by the pilots. In case of loss of electrical power, the door can be closed manually with two bolts. The cockpit entrance houses a seat for an observer. When not in use, the seat is stored along the left side wall and held in place with a bungee cord. The observer seat is pushed in place until it locks to the door frame. To release the seat, you pull the black knob sideways towards the captain's side. In an emergency, the seat can be rotated backwards after opening the door and releasing two safety pins. At the aft part of the pedestal, there are two foldable footrests. I don't have any picture of them, but this is the position. The observer seat belt has a tricky buckle. In order to fasten a seat belt and a harness, the locking pin is pulled halfway out and left in that position until all belt clips are in place. Then the locking pin is closed. It's important that the belt is tightened over your hips, otherwise the buckle will rest on your chest and you are at risk of slipping under the buckle and get strangulated in case of a sudden stop. To unlock the seat belt, you pull the locking pin fully out. There's a life jacket in the cabinet under the seat. To the left of the observer seat is a compartment for smoke goggles, a quick donning oxygen mask, a switch for the forward cargo compartment light, a push button for the entrance light, which is here and in the aft part of the cabin, a ventilation duct, a reading light, a hand microphone, but only in aircraft with a third audio control panel and a transmitter switch. The cockpit windows cannot be opened. Instead, there is an escape hatch above the observer seat. To the right of the observer seat, there are three steps and a compartment for an emergency escape road. This picture shows how the escape rope is used. The pilot seats are adjustable in all directions. When not in use, the seats are in full aft and full out position. This enables the pilots to get in and out of the seats. To move the seat horizontally, pull the edge lever back and move the seat inwards and then forwards as required. To adjust the seat vertically, you pull the V-lever up. The seat is spring-loaded to balance your weight. The seat back is reclined by pulling the R-lever, which is located on the outer side of the seat. Some seats have adjustable lumbar support. On each side of the base of the seat back, there are two wheels. One moves the lumbar in and out, and the other moves the lumbar support up and down. Finally, you adjust the rudder pedals with this hand crank. You must be able to apply full rudder in both directions. When correctly seated, the red dot on the seat alignment indicator shall cover the white dot. This allows you to see over the nose and the entire instrument panel. The seat cushion has a cut for the control column. 
The thigh supports are spring loaded, which allows them to be pushed on when you stretch your legs. This gives better rudder authority. The seats have adjustable armrests. There's an adjustment wheel under the forward part of the armrest. The armrest can be used for all phases of flight, including takeoff and landing. I use them all the time. Other pilots have other preferences. The seatbelt has a normal buckle that is easy to operate. The harness is spring loaded and can be locked by pushing this lever down. In normal use, the lever is in up position and is useful to hold a waist bag. Behind the captain's seat, there is a hook for the observer's headset and two coat hangers. After the sign windows, there are two outlets for two headsets. The upper outlet is for the observer and the lower is for the captain. Further down, there is a shelf for the technical logbook. At floor level, there is a pouch for a life jacket and space for a bag full of manuals. Under the left side window, there is a communication hatch. It's part of the ventilation system and is also used to pass documents. The wall behind the first officer is full of circuit breakers. There's also a circuit breaker panel in the ceiling. After the sign window, there's an outlet for a headset. The circuit breaker panels have bars to protect the circuit breakers from being hit by the first officer's seat. Therefore, the seat back must be put in full upright position before you park the seat. Below the circuit breakers, there's a crash axe and a fire extinguisher. At floor level, there's a pouch for the life jacket. And there are three slots for the landing gear pins. You always check that they are in place and not attached to the landing gear before you take off. There is also space for manuals. Over each pilot seat, there is a loudspeaker, a dome light, a reading light, and a sun visor. The side windows have yellow curtains. We use them a lot. However, the curtains are fragile and must be handled with care. An engineer once told me that the curtain cost $300. Under the side windows, there are hooks for headsets, a chart holder, or an electronic flight bag if installed, a pen holder, and a hook for the hand mic. There is space for a crew bag between each seat and the sidewall. On the sidewall near the pilot's knee, there is a second hook for the hand mic, a cup holder, an ashtray, a compartment for smoke goggles, and a flashlight. The control wheel has a map holder with light and a pitch trim switch, autopilot off push button, a radio transmitter switch, and a touch control steering push button, TCS, which allows you to take momentarily control of the aircraft without disconnecting the autopilot. The port maintenance panel is protected by a transparent cover and has two parts. The left part is dedicated maintenance. The design varies with the ATR variant. This is the 600. The only thing of interest here is the rotary selector and the test push button, which I use to test the stall warning system every morning. The right side have indicators for the electrical system. Variants with glass cockpit standard 3 have digital indicators. Ahead of the electrical indicators is a switch that activates the nose wheel steering. Next is the nose wheel steering tiller. It's only on the captain's side. There is a radio transmitter push button at the end of the tiller. And inside this container is a quick turning oxygen mask. The starboard maintenance panel is also protected by a transparent cover and is rarely touched by the pilots. The only exemption is the elevator clutch push button when installed, which is used to recouple the elevator clutch if it has been disconnected. You have to follow the checklist for this. Next, there's a handle marked extract airflow. In normal operation, it is secured in open position. In case of smoke in the forward cargo compartment, the checklist calls for this lever to be moved to close position. This will prevent smoke from entering the flight deck. This is the control panel for the video surveillance system. It consists of three cameras covering the entrance doors to the cockpit and a monitor. If the airplane doesn't have cameras, the pilot will have to use a peephole in the door to check who's outside. 
And finally, we have the quick tanning oxygen mask for the first officer. You may have noticed that some cockpits have brown panels, while others have blue panels. Brown is the original ATR color, and it was used until the middle of the 2000s when the 500 variants were in full production. Then, ATR changed to Airbus Blue. Therefore, you will see 500s with both brown and blue cockpits. That's all for this time. I hope you liked it. If you want to learn more about the systems in this aircraft, please check the following videos. The next videos will be about the instrument panel, the pedestal and the overhead panel. Please support my channel by sharing with your friends and by clicking like and subscribe so you don't miss the next videos. You can also follow me on Facebook and give a donation with PayPal. See links below. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy learning!